come back to you on same same question with the work that you're doing with global central banks. You know, what are what frictions are they trying to solve? Where are you hearing more on the retail side? Are you hearing it's more about wholesale application? Just to sort of step back, I mean, I think to recognize there is this fundamental competition going on between the innovation that Axima referred to with citizens desperately looking for cheaper, faster mechanisms and central banks trying to bring a level of sort of thoughtful control, right? And, and you've got citizens that are going to private money solutions to give themselves the solutions they're looking for that oftentimes maybe don't have the right set of regulatory oversight. Uh, and, and, you know, the, so we're, we're in this space where if central banks don't move fast enough, citizens will move faster to private money solutions with all the risks that that creates relative to the singleness of money and the, the trust in the single sort of issuing entity, right? So, so I think we have to recognize we're in this competition. Um, and, um, you know, to, just to kind of go back to, I think, what Seema was saying, I mean, one of the, from, from an, an enterprise standpoint, the huge amounts of money that are locked in various payment channels in the current financial system is huge. And so being able to bring money to more real-time movement increases the velocity of money, dramatically reduces the cost. So that the, the velocity of money plus the increased time, you know, reduced time to settlement, there are definitely savings there for institutions. On the, the customer side, um, there is dramatic savings if you simply are just moving money from one digital wallet to another. The problem that a lot of consumers have is they may have some stable coin sitting in a digital wallet, but then it's like, well, what do I do with it? I don't have any way to actually use it. I think if we see more adoption of private money in digital wallets, you will see more e-commerce solutions emerging in countries that take advantage of the money that is sitting in those wallets. So you will see more e-commerce providers saying, I will give you the option to use money in your Web3 wallet on my e-commerce site so that you can take advantage of those funds. C can I ask you, what, what rails do you see underpinning that system? Are these go going to be open public blockchains? I mean, we, I heard reference to, you know, the banks have blockchains, but are, these are permissioned blockchains. You're describing a very different world. Can we yeah. delve into that a little well, bit? Well, you, you're, you're exactly right. And this is some of this competition where we see consumers moving to stablecoin systems that are based on permissionless blockchains, right? There are absolutely net new novel risks in those systems, right? And we do not yet have global standards that I think we absolutely need to sort of set a sort of what is, how do we govern these permissionless systems? And what is the agreement on security, you know, sort of a corporate governance, but governance over the, you know, acceptable distribution, the resilience, the stability of these permissionless systems. We do need that, right? But consumers are migrating to these solutions because it's giving them a solution here and now, right? And so the challenge for central banks and governments is to try and catch up mm -hmm. and to agree to develop a global framework on how we set those standards so that we can see it a transition and an eventual reconciliation. If we don't, we will see consumers migrating to solutions that are increasingly apart from where central banks want them to be and believe them to be. And then it becomes sort of a compliance nightmare where you're trying to ban those kind of solutions, and yet consumers are trying to do it sort of, you know, in, in and, the and, and I think you've kind of nailed the premise of this conference, right, which is that these rails can transact all types of instruments. They could be CBDCs, it could be stable coins, it could be cryptocurrencies, it could be other types of tokenized assets but those standards need to apply to these new rails, these new systems across the board, right? Regardless of the asset that's being transacted. Um, so Michael, let me come back to you and, and